There's a lot of misunderstanding about the about Dr. Perry's 1994 spec reform memorandum. I had the privilege of working with Dr. Perry on two defense science board studies um, focused on reducing reliance on mill specs and standards and increasing the use of commercial uh, documents and commercial products. He never said, get rid of all mill, spe mill specs. Indeed, he recognized the importance of military documents to define unique military requirements. There are no commercial analogs to aircraft carrier takeoffs and landings, to the shock and vibration that ships experience when firing their big guns or even taking fire, to the requirements for missiles to sit in, the, in idle readiness for 20 years and then have to perform flawlessly when called on, to the harsh environments sensitive communications equipment must endure, and so on. The products that support those kinds of requirements are best defined by military documents. But where there are commercial equivalents to military use, Dr. Perry wanted DOD to take advantage of the rapid technological advancements and the extraordinary capabilities of the commercial marketplace by using more commercial products and by defining our needs with non-government standards. What Dr. Perry did do was to establish high hurdles to the unthinking use of military specifications and standards. Policies that he created forced program offices to have, extreme, to, have to have extremely strong justification for use of a military standard as a requirement in a major system acquisition. It was a game changer and the culture shift is still with us today. It was true that years ago too many times our, our system specifications and contract requirements were created at the Xerox machine we used what we had used in the past, and military specs and standards were written into contracts and into system specifications without program offices really even know, knowing what it was that they were requiring. Prior to mil spec reform, DOD had about 40,000 military specifications and standards. Many called out specific design, manufacturing, material, and finishing requirements that limited the ability of commercial products to compete and limited the ability of our contractors to offer their best solutions and their best designs to the Department of Defense. Contracts, system specifications, and requirements, uh, statements of work, were too often assembled at the copy machine. The end result was that mil specs were blindly incorporated into system specifications and into statements of work without program offices really even understanding what it was they were requiring. The result of reform was much more thoughtful and careful application of military unique requirements and the widespread use of commercial products and non-government standards. Today, the inventory of documents used repetitively in acquisition is more than 50% non-government documents and commercial item descriptions, a dramatic change from what we had prior to mil spec reform. During mil spec reform, we had a comprehensive review of documents to look for um, opportunities to move to more performance requirements and industry documents. We benefit from that uh, tech refresh today. The move to non-government standards has been um, dramatic. <laughs>